the early hours are pretty excellent. Oh, uh, if, if only because they are intriguing and different uh, and surprising. So, what, so hang on, just uh, just real quick recap where we all, where we all are. Joe and I played the first chapter. Dantac yeah. played. I played the first two to three hours. First take. two to three hours. I think that's about what we played too. I, Dantec played more than us. I know that. Oh, okay. Um, and then, okay. Just, and, so we all have but, some frame of reference. And I played about I thing. played about twelve hours. Okay, mm, great. And there is meaty. something there is something that was missing. I think from Miller's from Miller's build too, because remember, the first time that he like started controlling it was when you were like pushing the uh, pushing the car. Yeah. And yeah, he missed that whole first part then. Yeah, and I don't know. I don't know what that is. It's and, the boss battle that you're supposed to lose is all that uh, Tabata was saying. Yeah. Yeah. If, if it's even like, I don't even remember if they, that might've just been our speculation. I don't remember how much they actually said about I it. I think they said, cause it's a uh, harkening back to but, Final Fantasy II's opening. Oh yeah. 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 You're, yeah. Something like that. Well, so anyway, that there's, there is an opening thing that we did not see in, in, in any of the stuff that we've played. I, I, think. I think that, I think that the early stuff is, um, is surprising in how different it is from what, uh, Final Fantasy faithful are used to um, and it does not play like a game that has been in development for more than a decade uh, like it plays like a ambitious forward looking attempt to modernize the Japanese RPG formula when I hear that it makes me wonder if they change those car controls <laughs> well the Can car <laughs> the car controls are minimal at best uh, I mean most of the time you're using auto like drive me here yeah um and when you do take manual control it is very 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 simplistic it's basically like directing which way you want to go and, and so magnetically it's trying to keep you on the road pretty still, right? much okay. right uh you're not you're not doing off-roading with the regalia fancy car okay um it's uh I think one of the challenges is going for a lot of people is going to be getting used to this combat system. Even after ten or twelve hours, I do not feel like I fully grasped the complexities of how to use that system well. When to use magic, when to tap into my allies' abilities, what weapons to use at different times. That's alarming. Um, and that either means that the that the combat system is confusing and not great. Or uh, that it's very sophisticated and it takes a long time to learn how to do do it well. Were you losing battles? Do you feel like you needed to understand it better? No, I think it was balanced pretty well. I mean, I think I I I'm, might have wiped a couple of times um, in like hard fights, but that's as it should be, right? Like I I didn't feel like I was ill equipped to progress through what they were putting me in front of, and the grades it was giving me at the end of fights were often, you know showing me that I was doing it well, you know, I was getting, I've got an A on offense and a C on stealth and, you know, a B on this other thing. And other times I'd get like low scores and I'd be like, yeah, I didn't do that fight really well. Hmm. Um, and, uh, but nonetheless, people who are used to the numbered Final Fantasy entries having, um, you know, just that qualities that that quality that all the Final Fantasy games have, or almost all of them have had, in terms of the the flow of battle and the sort of menu based systems and things like that. Almost all of that stuff is just not here. It's it's really just a different system that is more rooted, as Joe's pointed out several times. Um, it's rooted in in sort of the Kingdom Hearts formula, and even there, it's a pretty dramatic reinvention and evolution of that concept. Action Kingdom Hearts, even more actiony. Hmm. Yeah, well, actiony mm. with with a little bit more sort of like tactical choices of uh, you know when to deploy certain abilities and that kind of thing. But it's just a lack of tutorials. Hmm. I think it's just a matter of like them saying like this is a big deep system and it's going to take you a while to like learn it all. And you're also, of course, you're unlocking new abilities all the time that change the way that you should. Uh, interact with the game like okay well now now I have the ability that when I dodge I get this bonus and so I should make sure and dodge in these certain circumstances or parry these kinds of attacks that kind of thing yeah um, so there's there's just a lot there's a lot going on there and that's gonna um, take some time I think for people to wrap their heads yeah. around yeah but. that's really good to hear because I know 
Well, the combat system was, there were a lot of things that were still sort of in flux when we were at the studio um, playing the game then. But I remember the last sort of like solid version of it before that was was episode Duske. And I remember combat being one of the things in there that, that had me a little worried about the game. It felt like it's sort of like, okay, you're just sort of doing the same things. The enemies have a lot of hit points that you're just sort of like slowly wearing down. So the, it, it, it makes me excited to know that the combat system feels sophisticated and not just straight up like repetitive. I, I think one of the things I, that I can highlight that I didn't love about the combat system uh, is on-screen confusion, uh, which is particularly potent in indoor areas or like tight battlefields. There's times where, you know, you always have your full party out there. Um, so that's, you already have like four people doing crazy actions and jumping up in the air and swinging swords and shooting guns and that kind of thing. You add to that a lot of the, these big monsters that are moving through this game world, and then you put them inside of a barn or something, and that's a recipe for like, I do not know what's happening on screen The right old now. behemoth barn. Get yeah. Ahead. yeah. yeah. Um, that, that's, I think the only thing that after the 10 or 12 hours of the game that I've played, uh, that I would, I would highlight as like a certain negative. Like, he, I really don't think that's going to be something people like. On top of that, from the gameplay I've seen, I'm also worried about the visual confusion combined with you guys are all going to have to act and help me out. Uh, just imagine what it sounds like. Uh, you know, you be Gladio, you be Prompto, right? I'm not being Prompto. <laughs> I no, imagine no, it's a lot. Okay, not ever. Oh, you can play along if you want. I imagine it's a lot of like, ha, here it comes. Whoa, look out. Gladio, I don't know about this. Whoa, over there. Cast fire. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Like, that shit. Constantly, That's, isn't that part of the charm? <laughs> you didn't need our help at all. No, you really, but it would have been great. better if yeah. there had been four of you joining in and on that. Yeah. But is that <laughs> constant and annoying? Is what I really want to know. Uh, I don't know. I mean, don't Japanese role playing games always have a little bit of that going on? It doesn't mean we can't critique it as I, being. I, like that. I agree. Yes. I I I I agree that it it still is deserving of critique. But um, yeah, there's some of that. And Dan Tech. <laughs> You're sitting there rolling your eyes and raising your eyebrows like you're the smartest guy in the room and not not saying anything. And you do that 100% of the time. (laughs) So if you have any observations to throw in, it'd be nice to hear. We're in the preview stage here. Uh, You've 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 previewed it. it. I I definitely think that Miller's concerns about combat are absolutely correct. Uh, Definitely agree with him 100%. The screen gets covered with mobs and everything's going on. It's very chaotic. Even if you're good at using your abilities, which I think I am, and the timing and everything, it still can be very confusing. And that's just against, like, one enemy. Mm-hmm. You, you had a whole battlefield of guys, and you're trying to, like, time your jump and your boost and your your downward slash and all this other weird stuff. The screen gets filled with chaos, and I don't mean in a good way. I mean, yeah. it's like, it's like I don't know. I guess I'll just hit the button until they die. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that that's a, that's a real risk. Um, I can see that being a problem in the fun. I absolutely can see that being a, a problem. I like the banter between the characters during combat. It's the, com- it's the banter outside of combat that I don't really doesn't really gel with me. Yeah, but- I'd love to know because <laughs> I remember we talked about fifteen for an entire month, Joe. Yeah, I remember the conclusion of one of the podcasts was it seemed like you and I, I think we're on the same page. We're a little bit worried about. I think no, I was more in the camp of I'm worried about these character personalities, how they're coming across, and you're like, ah, give it a chance. It's the Japanese version you're dealing with. Come on, don't yeah. be a dick. Yep, nope. It, that's <laughs> that. I, that's I. I would still. I would still stand by that. Okay. But so now that we have the English version, who's right? <laughs> I think that there are aspects of this game that, um, that like a lot of Japanese games with a strong story focus, um, it's hard to localize things over and and not have things feel a little awkward, uh-huh. right? <laughs> Like, Read in between the lines, people. Well, I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to like obfuscate here. I'm just saying, like, it's, uh, it, there, there's always that weird disconnect. It's the same sort of thing for those of us who enjoy or have enjoyed in the past anime, right? Like, there's something every, like, even when it's great, there's times you're like, eh. That's not that's or even, not quite the way people old, talk to each other. Even old Final you know? Fantasy games. I was replaying um I was I was playing some Final Fantasy IV complete collection. And there mm. are a lot of weird little like char- like strangely translated or whatever, like weird dialogue moments between a lot of different characters in there. Yet I know Dan agrees with me that, that game overall on the narrative front is is, is a strong one. But it's so a huge it's like, difference when they actually have to voice it. And I feel like this is something the world of Final Fantasy we're gonna talk about soon. Yeah. Uh but having to hear those characters and the inflection and kind of over the top vibe is that fair? Uh, 
Well, certainly the one character Prompto is like <laughs> is like the the stereotypical Japanese like constantly chatty making jokes character. I think some of the other characters are a little bit more sort of like um, nuanced. Um, I feel like you're giving it a little bit of a pass. I'm not. I, I think I, what I'm saying is that like this is a game that is really really big and really complicated that I mean we we've mostly just been talking about combat but that ignores the the many many different activities that the early hours of the game exhibit everything from like a fishing mini game to riding around on chocobos to playing some sort of pinball thing to you know tracking down ingredients to cook with <laughs> to leveling I mean, there's there's a lot here. It's a really, really big and deep game. Hitting and, the mute yeah. button. Well, no, and I hate and, the... I, I just, in general, take take issue with the idea of, like, hey, you're giving it a pass after... I mean, like, you're talking about a game that is, like, a 40, 50-hour experience. Oh, you I completely the agree. I just want it. And these kinds of games are so, like, cumulative in effect, both from a narrative perspective and a combat perspective, that it's, like... like I, I think it is more unfair for any game, not just Final Fantasy, more unfair to come down negative after that amount of time on a game of that size. I am talking specifically about the characters. Sure. Even, I feel especially like especially on the characters yeah, though too. You don't, okay, well, because like like those build on different side stories. Oftentimes there's a character you think was annoying and you get like a dream sequence or side quest or something and then it's like, "Oh, that's why they're terrible." All right, here's okay. the core of it that I'm getting at. Okay. After 12 hours, do you give a shit about any of those characters? I do. Um Okay. There I'm, we go. I think that one of the things that they do a fun a fun thing with is playing around with the idea that these guys are are royals, right? And there's this weird dynamic of like the three buddies are are basically like royal bodyguards, right? But there's also the sense that in this world, the royal bodyguards have been this guy's best friends for his whole life, right? They've always been there, and there's no sense amongst themselves that that Noctis is is better than them, really, or more deserving of like not getting made fun of or anything like they're they're just buddies but there is always this undercurrent that like we need to keep noctis safe right and that's kind of an interesting dynamic yeah. right like what they the the game's greatest potential if it works out is to to explore the the nature of like um of like male camaraderie um in a in an interesting way right um, I think there's also something that, that's, that's interesting about the story that's, that's dealing with the sort of romance element, which the early hours only have sort of small tinges of. But, but you do sort of see the idea that this person that the main character is sort of destined to marry, there is actually an affection there. And that they are kind of like, uh, even, even after having met just when they were kids, they're kind of in love with each other. Arranged marriages work, it turns out. Uh, and Science so, backs it up. And so, Very like, handsome. I think they're going to kind of explore... This guy. It's true! This guy. <laughs> they're going to kind of explore, you know, that dynamic. It will have that kind of classic Final Fantasy romance angle, which I think I have fond memories of things like Final Fantasy VIII's um, sort of slightly melodramatic... Take Shut up, Dan. On, Shut up. On, on <laughs> romance. Just gonna punch Dan Tack in the face. What face is he making, Joe, for the audio listeners? Uh, he's just making the I'm so smart and everyone else's opinion is wrong face. Uh, I, didn't, I, I didn't actually Shut say up. anything. Okay. <laughs> I, Go on. Do you hate Final Fantasy VIII's romance? I don't care for it. Okay. Do you, have you ever been wooed by romance in a Final Fantasy game? Sure, but I don't want Miller's talking here. Well, okay. well, yeah, but you're over here just basically I didn't giving say him a anything. thumbs down. You're doing the physical version of interrupting. <laughs> there is no such thing. I think whether it's a podcast. whether it is whether we're talking about about uh, you know Final Fantasy X or Final Fantasy IV or or eight, there's a there's a long history of sort of that um, that slightly overblown, over romanticized um, sort of love relationship at the centerpiece of a particular of, of many of the final fantasy games and that is almost certainly going to play a part in in what's going on in 15 i'm sure there are plenty of overblown romances in final fantasy 11 <laughs> online marriages the whole <laughs> thing that too. Uh, um i i had a last i i I, well, I i don't know if it's the last but the thing that i'm curious about with with 15 and i'm not asking you to like position it as a save like the savior or anything sure 
But I don't think, you know, I think a lot of people are coming off of the, especially like the, the 313 games, mm-hmm. maybe a little bit sour on, uh, on the franchise. For someone, for people who like the old games, maybe didn't like 13, do you see 15 as like being redemptive or is it just this like crazy offshoot that's just like another weird experience, ex- experiment that, could, I mean, could be good, but is this the thing to like bring Final Fantasy fans back? I think this game that, I think this game succeeds at having enough novel and surprising things about it that people who were Final Fantasy fans will want to play it. That's Hmm. what I can confidently say. Now, whether they're going to like the new direction in combat, whether they're going to like the weird sort of Americana influenced like setting that they're playing with, with all the diners and jukeboxes and pinball machines, I don't know. (laughs) Like... That's it's different. It's surprising. You know, like I I, I think uh, there's a lot of stuff there that longtime fans are going to have to um, struggle with to, hmm. to, to understand whether like, do I really like this? Am I if I'm honest with myself? Um, like, am I just like not liking this because like I want it to be more like Final Fantasy four or something uh, and, and what it was in my memory? Um, now, what I again, what I don't know is whether it's all going to come together. All the things we're talking about, whether it's the combat, the the sort of study in male camaraderie, the you know how emotionally caught up in the romance we get, whether the activities are going to hold up over the long term, all that stuff is just you know we don't know yet. Uh, you, it really is going to be one of those games that we need to wait and 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 see. There's a lot there, and Square continues to pour more in because there was news last week that one of the DLC things they're releasing is online multiplayer co-op. Yeah. What do you think of this? Do you know this, Dan? No, I hadn't heard that. Uh, Joe Miller, what do you think about making this multiplayer just for this one slice of DLC? I just don't understand how it works. Like how that would work. Like is Prompto's screen just filled with button prompts of things to say? And you just spam all the buttons real quick. <laughs> a button for falling over, <laughs> crap your pants. <laughs> uh, no, I think I mean just from the bit of the combat that that I've played, it seems like, um, with the exception of like Noctis being able to direct his party members to like do specific things, it seems like they're kind of off. Like there are four people fighting in combat, no matter what. Right. Yeah. So, to make to make more to, to add to add an a person behind one of those people to add more deliberate control, I think that could. I mean, I think that could be fun. Yeah. Whatever. It certainly plays into the themes they're exploring here. Right. Mm-hmm. Like the whole game. The game is about friendship and like sticking by your friends. I mean, <laughs> for goodness' sake, you o- you open your story with a new recorded version of Stand by Me. Right? I mean, like, they're not being <laughs> subtle here, guys. Like, this is a story about, like, what friendship means right. and, and what you do for your friends. And if if they want to put in online co-op for you to play with your friends and, like, you know, have something you can do together to increase your own sort of, like, camaraderie, camaraderie with your buddies, I mean, that makes sense. I just, I don't know how it's going to... It seems like it's this whole other beast having to balance and mm-hmm. and make it work well. Well, I don't we'll know. see when the game comes out if it ends up being a, a blueberry pie scene from Stand By Me. Or yes, not. we'll see. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just want to throw in there. I, I am very excited about playing it and seeing what the final final version is like. I want to throw that out there before I say anything else. But I do want to say, like you know. By the way, before you even say this, Joe, you're welcome to scream "Shut up, Dan!" at any point throughout that because I enjoyed that more than you could possibly I mean, imagine. Miller Miller mentioned, you know, the comparison of the memory of something like Final Fantasy IV, but Final Fantasy IV holds up today. You can go back and play that right now, and it's still really good. Yeah. So I so I'd argue that you're not you're not you know comparing against the memory. That's a game you can still go play today. Well, to be fair, you can't pull off a you can, 35 year old off the street and say play this game and be like, whoa, these characters. Yeah, boom, you boom. and I can you and I can play it and say it holds up because like there's a but there's a connection there already. Mm-hmm. I I mean I have I've heard from plenty of people who like hear great things about Final Fantasy 4 and 6 VI and 7 about being these like f- like the best games in the series but turns out that those games are like 20 years old now or more and people who don't have that previous connection don't 100% don't hold huh. up all right we I mean we saw a lot of that with the Final Fantasy 7 game club yeah. and we when we did that. So. Very much so. I, 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 I'll, the last thing I'll say about it is that 
these guys are trying to make a game that isn't just going to draw in the the ever diminishing crowd of Final Fantasy Faithful, right? Yeah. We we we, we address that question. I think if you like Final Fantasy, you're going to want to try this game just to like understand how dramatic and 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 crazy and ambitious they're going here and be part of a really interesting conversation about the direction of final I, fantasy I, I, I think so. the 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 larger question is whether the changes that they're making and and the kind of uh, stuff that they're doing where there's a lot of nods to sort of like north american open world exploration games stuff like assassin's creed or grand theft auto um if they can draw in some of that crowd that's what uh, that's what they're trying to do. Yeah. Right. And and that's going to be the big question uh, for whether that game finds the financial success that it's hoping for. Yeah.